Welcome to Sunday's Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is November 3rd, 2019, and Miss Vegas has a great watch list for us this week. Sure do. Cannot believe it's the month of November. We're going to talk about Apple, IMGN, ABBV, REXN, and of course, I want to talk about Baidu. So let's talk about Apple. I mean, Apple was just amazing all week. You know, just when people thought that Apple was basically not going to continue growing, um, that is not the case. I mean, Apple TV Plus is home of the Apple Originals, and, um, you know, you can get this now for four ninety nine per month. And if you actually buy an Apple product, they're going to give you the Apple Plus for free. I actually heard they would give it to you free for a year. So what an incredible day we had with this one on Friday. We traded this on the option side, and my goodness, we banked a lot of money. Um, we bought these option calls here, and um, the money that we banked was just incredible. And this is why I really encourage small accounts um, to really you know, take advantage of these opportunities that if you have a small account, Come join us and come check us out. Uh, you can learn how to grow that account. I mean, we had Apple calls um, that were alerted at nine cents. Those so went all the way to 90. And we even had Apple calls uh, for the 250 strike that were alerted at $1.36. So $136 investment and went as high as 595 plus. Um, so that was fantastic. I mean, there's really great money to be made here with Apple. I don't think Apple's done. I think that it's just beginning. Uh, it's not just a phone company. It's a subscription service company now. And I think there's going to be more revenues. Don't forget they have the Apple Pay credit card. So, again, more customer revenue, more subscriptions. Um, so, Jim, let's hear about the Apple chart. All right. Well, the Apple, as we see, we got a whole a whole year new high at 255.93 last Friday with that low down here at 142 so this had a really good run off that news Friday the trend was the 20 day chart from 223 all the way to 256.20 so let's look at the daily here we'll try to find us a support to get at I'm thinking probably no lower than right here at 252, so that's going to be the third one, right about there, 252.54, and then that second one's going to be right here at 253.80, and that first one's going to be right here at 254.81. But if she breaks out, keeps on running, we can look at at least 260 on this trade. But right 255, that's a nice little target, and that's going to be Apple. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be IMGN. You know, IMGN, I mean, the reason I like this one here is, you know, they did have their earnings report. They also gave an update on their progress report with regards to their clinical stage, um, you know, products. You know, this company is working uh, for treatment of cancer, and uh, they did give an update on their phase three myrosol, which is treatment for the ovarian cancer. Uh, which I'd love to hear that um, there's going to be some sort of advanced uh, treatments uh, that are going to hopefully pass and get to a you know, final approval. Um, they did meet uh, with the FDA, by the way, to review the data of the phase three of the Marisol product. And, um, you know, they uh, anticipate to enroll first patients for this product before the end of this year on the strength of the data that they've obtained. And I think that this is fantastic news. Uh, we know that ovarian cancer is a big thing. And wouldn't it just be wonderful to know that something else can be treated and um, you know make something just go away and save lives? Um, so this is fantastic. And also they had their revenues, which were 13.3 million compared to 10.9. So definitely, you know, you should be watching IMGN. Uh, either for a swing trade uh, continuation because to me, you know, this is an earnings winner and the fact that they had good news on the next phases of the clinical trial. So I think we'll be seeing an expansion on the stock. We have good support above the 50, above
above the 200 day, uh, it looks to me that this is ready for some continuation. And to me, it's also an earnings mover. So the fact that it has good earnings is also a good sign for a biotech company. So Jim, let's hear about the IFGN chart. Well, like you said, it, it's almost running up to a triple top high here at 340. So that would be like a triple top area for a triple top high. I'm seeing support right around 249. And then from that's about the beginning of the breakout that it had on Friday. It with maybe the first, maybe second support right around two, 263 with a low support or the first one right around 280 if it decides to pull back. But we do have a gap to break if it does get up to that 340 area. So I'm going to call that a hard resistance. If we can break that 340, it can fill the gap to 396. And that's going to be IMGN. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ABBV, which is brought up in the room a few times. Oh, yeah. So, ABBV. So, first of all, um, this company, pay attention because they had their good earnings. You know, this company is in the billions of dollars. The third quarter revenue is 8.479. Um, you know, this is an increase of 9.6%. Um, you know, this company is definitely one to watch. They've had a very strong performance from the immunology and hematologic oncology portfolios, which is why they had a strong growth this quarter. Um, so I think, you know, worldwide, the revenues um, were 8.479, an increase of 3%. And also, um, you know, this company is working on a lot of different things. Um, they also announced that they have the FDA approval of a product called Rinvoc. Uh, and this is for people that have severe to moderate or moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis and um, you know they are going to be looking to select a phase three program uh, which is going to have approximately 4,400 patients uh, so this is actually great news on that and so this company again another stock to watch I mean this company the money is there um, this is going to be looked at uh, on the true trading and from the stock level and also looking at it maybe from the option side. Uh, but this has a nice pocket pivot and uh, a beautiful breakout based on the news with the earnings for sure. So that's fantastic and I look forward to seeing what else ABPV has to do. Um, the guidance also was increased. Um, which looks like a growth of 39%. Uh, so that's great to hear. So Jim, let's hear about um, what's happening with ABBVFV. Yep, we had a real hard resistance we had to break it, and that was right at 75.73 that I had charted up that could bring us into a whole entire new channel, which it has. And that resistance level is right at 83.56. So... I think that's probably the next line. Yep, that's the next line on up here. So we've had a nice little breakout on this. We had a double top breakout right here at 78.70. So that's where I'm going to call low support right now because we did kind of pull back to that once before right here. So that 78.70 is going to be a strong buy. The resistance to break is going to be this 82, I'm going to say 81.85. That's going to be the resistance that we got to break. So, strong buy here at 78.70. Third support, 79.42. Then we got 80, right about where that double, triple top came. And then we had that little pop right here at 80.56, which is going to be your first support. And then resistance to break is going to be 81.85 to bring it to up this topper into this channel right up in here, right about the what was that 83 60 area somewhere around that that's a b and this and here's really one to watch i mean if you can get in on a pullback um the money that this thing brings in and it, uh one of the members in our room and i was talking about this back and forth for a couple months now at least every day so yeah i've noticed we definitely had that breakout and if we can break past that we've got that whole new level to get to and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be REXN. 
Yeah, so this is called Rexon, and, you know, this was up uh, 52%. I mean, you know, keep in mind, uh, Jim could show you guys, that this is a low float stock. I mean, we're talking 4.02 um, million shares, very low float. And um, what I like about this is, you know, the reason it was surging, I mean, people were saying, oh, there's a pump and dump. But, you know, the reason it moved, there was some news. Um, that they with an article that they published in the Journal of Molecular Cancer Therapeutics, and the article was showing that there was some good results on the RX5902, and this is um, encouraging preclinical data on this particular pipeline, and this is with regards to the um, negative breast cancer. Self. And uh, I think, you know, as you know, I mean, breast cancer, I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, my mom's had it, and I've had uh, other relatives that have had it, and uh, I'd love to see, you know, some advancement in this in this cancer, too. So the fact that they had a really good article that was published um, in the Journal of Molecular Cancer Therapeutics is what moved the stock, and so hence, you should definitely keep an eye. Also, to mention, you know, they had... Um, they were looking at uh, strategic alternatives. Remember, they did mention that back in September. And so Oppenheimer is the one that's helping them out with this. Um, what does that mean? You know, um, so could something be coming up for them as they advance maybe with this RX5902? So keep a watch on this particular stock. I don't have a position on it, but I will be definitely looking at it tomorrow and see if there's going to be any type of continuation and then Jim let's hear about uh, maybe some support because maybe there are people that are in the trade and we wouldn't want it to go below a certain price point so what can you tell us about that chart well let's look at the early pull that right here we were at a yearly bottom we definitely popped up we had a low of 159 and it kind of hovered there for about a week and then Friday she broke out so REXN had a high that day of 287. I go all the way back here on a yearly. It had a yearly high of 1980. So I don't know in the past if it's had any splits or anything, but it has really pulled back to a yearly bottom. So this is one I definitely want to keep eye out on. Let me go to the 20 day here. Change this to 20 days. We had a 20-day high of about 211, so that's where I'm going to call support at. I don't want to get no lower than that 211 to 205 area. And then we got a resistance right here, right around the 235. So we're at 288, and I'm going to pull this up to 10-day. I'm going to draw these trend lines in here as we go. Yeah, there's that 194, so they don't look too good. Right there at 226. That's going to be your another one. Then we'll go to a 5-day. That bring you right there about 265. We've got a resistance right here. Then you got a low support right here. So this is how I'm going to call it. After hours, we close at 208. I don't want to see it go no lower than 195. 211 is going to be a resistance that we got to break. If we can bust past that, you got these other little resistances to go to. But you might just settle back to this 195 and have a little pop up here to this resistance of 126. That's going to be your strong resistance. You can see the descending pattern that happened right here with the lower highs. And it held that support area. So that's going to be the resistance that's going to be hard to break. 226. REXN. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Baidu. That was a great call by Miss Vegas. Yeah, you know what, we had a fantastic day with Baidu on Friday, I just want to quickly mention, so you know, we were looking at uh, monitoring this one throughout the day, gave the option call there for the 104s, now I didn't alert it until later in the day because, you know, 
waiting for some action here on the stock. Started to see, um, if you can look at that just screenshot, I did put a little clip of the chart there. We could see when the chart started just before one o'clock, um, the chart started to uh, make that move. But we did take the 104 calls because they were a little bit away from the money, but uh, was pretty confident I'd probably be in the money later in the day. Uh, the Bollinger Bands were starting to get tight around two o'clock. You could see we hit the 104.06. And then um, thanks to Jim with his fantastic trade skills, um, gave us the resistance numbers on 104.56 and a 104.70. And let me tell you, um, you know, it's you can definitely take trades, but if you don't know how to chart, believe me, you're not going to stay in the trade. You're not going to be able to be as profitable. You've got to know supports and resistance because that's going to help you either stay in or get out. And Jim is fantastic at that. Um, his information helped us hold the chart hold the trade and you can see by do we see you because look what happened around three o'clock we could see a huge volume search come in and we were still holding on to that particular trade and the by do contracts went actually a little went over even 38 cents i mean people did sell when they got 100 because remember these are lotto plays and these expire the same day and look at the time of the day um it was already you know a little over three o'clock obviously and, uh, you know, people don't want to be stuck holding those contracts. But boy, oh boy, those contracts did very well for many people banking on that. Um, definitely a great uh, lotto play and a great winner. Um, the other thing to mention with Baidu is just, you know, keep it on watch this week. It does have earnings coming up November the 6th, uh, which is on Wednesday. It will be reporting after hours. Um, one of the things I did read and heard is that the CFO has submitted his resignation, um, Herman Yu, and uh, he submitted the resignation apparently in October, and that his last day at the company will be the end of November. Now, Baidu is denying this. Um, maybe there is some credibility to this. Um, you know, he used to be the director of CTRP, but then there was the sale of CTRP a couple months ago. Um, they did postpone their earnings because they were supposed to have it on October 29th, and then they moved it to November the 6th. Um, so, you know what, maybe we'll get some updates on this at the uh, investors conference call um, when they do explain the Baidu earnings, and we'll also hear about, you know, what is happening with the CFO, and is he leaving, and did have a replacement. So, I think uh, Baidu, you know, definitely see it on watch. Um, you know, does, I'm not too sure how this is going to react based on market news. Um, the analysts are saying they're a little bit bearish on this, but again, um, we don't know until we hear the guidance. So we'll have to see what the guidance is like. Uh, some of the articles I've read have said the guidance um, is pretty much not going to be uh, increased for their 2020 outlook, but we don't know. Um, that could change, so we'll have to wait for the earnings and see. But definitely keep by do on your watch because it's going to be on mine. I don't have any positions in this at the moment, but I'll definitely be watching it for sure. Jim, what do you want to tell us about by do? Well, it's definitely oversold. I mean, it's down here setting up in, in a uh, uh, symmetrical flag from 93.39 from up here in this top of this channel right around the 117.00. 44 area so that's going to be the hard resistance to get to right now I think it can pull back well it's just one we're going to have to watch the trend on you can see here we got a resistance we got to get to and that's at 105.76 if we can break past that we got newer highs right there right around the 106.79 but support level is going to be right down here right, right around the 103.29 maybe somewhere in that area maybe just a little bit lower 103.12 no lower than that so by do keep an eye on it resistance is going to be at 105.76 and that's it miss vegas anything else you'd like to say you know what um anyone's welcome to come check us out come to our chat room we have obviously a free trial and you know what i think it just pays for itself and, um, you know, you get a lot of value out of it. You get the voice all day. You get the scanners. You get the support and resistance called out in real time. I mean, that makes a huge difference in your trading. 
Um, yeah, it's very different than just, you know, messaging and saying, here's an alert, but, you know, do you know where to get out? Do you know when to stay in? Um, and that is a huge difference uh, versus just messages on uh, alerts. Um, it's helpful, especially if trading is new for you or, you know, you need, you need some support on uh, supports and resistance. Uh, you know, we're here for you. So come on by. And uh, November, it looks like it's going to be a really good month. I'm really excited for the month. So I hope uh, everyone has a great rest of the weekend. And I uh, hope you had a good Halloween if you went out trick-or-treating. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow in chat. Jim, anything else to add? Nope, this is Sunday's edition. Please subscribe and ring that bell. And also here on the webpage, we have a little Tweety Bird right there. That's our Twitter account. If you'd like to hit that follow button, that would be very appreciated. And this is the Sunday's Report with Vegas and Jim, November 3rd, 2019. And have a great week.